Starship Simulator is an indie title being created by UK developers Fleet Yard Studios. The games design features humanity's first truly fully crewed starship exploring a 1 to 1 scale recreation of the Milky Way Galaxy. You can download the tech demo for the Unreal Engine game right now on Steam and already explore the proto version of the galaxy. When finished Fleet Yard are promising procedurally generated scientific gameplay, xeno archaeology, biology and botany and even communication and potentially conflict with alien civilizations in single and multiplayer. It's a bold and ambitious title for sure but it's also unique and very exciting. I recently sat down with the games developer and designer Dan Govia for a tour of the Magellan class exploration vessel that is featured in the sim while he explained his vision and Fleet Yard's future plans for the game. So you've, you've got a bit of a habit of um, um, I'm going to say accidentally building starships. Um, this isn't your yes. this isn't your first starship is it Dan you're somewhat of a um somewhat of a printing machine when it comes to starship what what have you done previously and how on earth did that all come about well it it started off in my bedroom back in the 90s with lego we've all been <laughs> and, there mate yeah yeah <laughs> and it doesn't doesn't seem to matter what i start off making it ends up as a starship <laughs> And it just doesn't matter. You know? Like I could be modeling something out of clay, and it'll end up being a starship. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I seem to just have it ingrained within me. Brilliant. Build starships. Part of your part of your DNA. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I um, in the late '90s, I became really obsessed with with Quake, and very quickly transitioned to using the BSP tools to make new maps for Quake. Right. And that then, of course, because of my weird obsession devolved into let's build a starship <laughs> and i had these these um these old star trek blueprints and um, i can't even remember now which ship it was but it was um it was either the refit or, or the or the tng one um and I, I started building you know the interiors and everything and and very quickly kind of realized that no quake can't do that <laughs> yeah, yeah um yeah and then fast forward a decade or so, um, I discovered Minecraft, and I saw this amazing video where someone was building the 1701D in Minecraft as, as, a, as a mega build, and this whole concept of mega builds was this whole new buzzword. Yeah. And I thought, ooh, I need to get in on that. So um, I started building the refit, being my favourite ship of all time. It's a glorious one. Yeah, it is indeed. Yeah, yeah. You can't beat the Wrath of Khan Enterprise. That's the best no, one. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. So uh, yeah, so I I set about building that and and quickly became frustrated by the the, the one meter cube resolution that you're stuck with in Minecraft. Mm. Um, so I, I moved on to CAD software and then I thought right okay let's let's build it in CAD. And then I had this this cool idea of okay so what if I really build it in CAD? And then I think about what materials would be used and and how the structural framework would have been put together and where do the pipes go and and you know knowing the the, the technology in the trek franchise mm. how would that fit if you were building it for real and this led me down this rabbit hole of engineering and, and how would we build it if we were really building it which i found fascinating um and that kind of caught the attention of the guys that were building stage nine and for anyone that's not familiar stage nine is a is a one-to-one -one recreation of the enterprise d um every room every deck wow and you know it was a fantastic project and i was super excited to be involved um so i joined them as a developer around about six months before they got a c and d so that right, was right bad, bad timing on my part oh. <laughs> so so i was just getting into it and then of course you know Paramount, grown up said no yeah cbs said no yeah so um so we had to abandon that um but you know we, we'd already you know written some tech and, and we knew what we were doing we had the experience um so we actually approached the uh, showrunners for the orville and you know we said you know would you have a problem if we did what we were doing for star trek for the orville um and they basically said okay you know as long as you're not trying to make a profit off of thing yeah, yeah great fill your boots so it's a bit more forward thinking, isn't um, it? You can, I kind of, I, I can appreciate that. 
Yeah, they were really supportive. I mean, really it was cool. never it was never you know official in speech marks, yeah. um, but you know they said they will allow us to exist yeah. as long as we treat it with respect and don't yeah. try and profit off of it. Um, so yeah, I spent a couple of years building the Orville, and that's still available now if anyone wants to take a look. Um, but three years ago, I, I I just had this this burning desire to go back to my roots of of engineering and realism and you know i that that little itch in the back of my mind about building it for real wasn't going away so the, um, the orville sorry the orville model that you did that was that that was much more of a um i'm going to use the word game but it wasn't it wasn't quite the nuts and bolts cables and 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 deuterium yeah, kind of thing that you're doing it's now. It, it's more of a, an interactive museum piece, I okay. suppose you could call it. Okay. it it's you know, it, it's a celebration of the show. It's not it, it's not what this is. Sure. So, okay. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do is I really wanted to go back to that whole idea of how would we build a starship? So, so if the human race had FTL technology and we wanted to go out there and explore the stars, then what would we build? And this is kind of my answer to that question okay. so e everything about this ship is how would we do it for real right okay okay and and how long has it taken you to get to this point so th this has been just you working on this full time is that right yeah yeah so i've been working on it full time for about three years wow um, i think we've only just passed the three-year point now um yeah and this is how i've got so obviously with just me working on it it takes longer than i would hope and everything takes longer than you expect yeah and you know i've i'm a bit of an elon musk when it comes to deadlines and timescales so there's a whole whole joke in the, in the, you know, the rocketry community elon time so you know, we, we very much got dan time so i'll say oh yeah i'll have that done in a week and then a month later i'm still working on it that could be game development all over though can't it it's always, yeah. there's always more wrinkles to it than um so what for anybody who's who's not who's not familiar with this already can you or, or hasn't seen we did a video already that kind of tried to explain um exactly what it is you're building here but can you have you got like a a kind of a, a, a paragraph that you can deliver that kind of describes exactly what you're trying to achieve here Sure, sure. I mean, I did have a, a rather succinct elevator pitch, which is what I think I put on Steam, but mm. it's so much more than that. Mm. So if I can encapsulate it as as concisely as possible, it's it's the human race exploring the stars for the first time. So this is an experimental ship where you go out there and you explore the galaxy. So it is very, very root. This is a space exploration game. And, and that's kind of the core thrust of it. Now, everything that happens from there, it, it varies depending on, on what it is you want from the game, I guess. So you can choose a role aboard the ship. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to keep clearing my throat. Coughing fit earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll forgive you. <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, so this is all about your role aboard the ship, depending on which crew role you choose. So if you're an engineer, there's going to be lots of engineering gameplay and if you're the captain there'll be lots of people to order around but everything in the game starts off with that core concept of exploring the galaxy right so when you arrive at a new star system we want it to be an unknown from that point so you don't quite know what it is you're going to discover and what effect that's going to have on the ship and crew and and what gameplay will then sort of spawn from that encounter um and and the for us if if you arrive at a star system and you're a little bit excited and a little bit a little bit nervous about what you're going to find then that's it that's we've hit the nail on the head that's what we want to achieve right okay you got so you'll have no idea what to expect when you get there kind of thing yeah yeah everything will be new yes absolutely um and that could be anything from something interesting to discover to something aggressive that's chasing you off. Okay, so every 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 position that we're looking at on the, on the bridge here, and it's a beautiful bridge, by the way, Dan. Absolutely Thank beautiful. You. Every position that we're looking at in here can be can be multiplayered essentially. So you could have a full complement of um, of other players on you on your starship, each one performing a specific set of tasks. Yes. Yes. Um, 
is it is it will it be workable for single player as well will it will someone be able to come into this and not have sort of you know eight friends that they can drag along yeah so the, the way we're designing it is the ship's going to have a set crew of about 200 if it's just you on your own that's you and 199 npcs okay and when you when you join the game you will pick which npc you're replacing essentially so that NPC will disappear, and you will take their place. Wow. So in a multiplayer environment, the, the more players that join, the more NPCs will vanish. And if you log off, that NPC will come back. So it's, the game will you know, retain its total crew roster. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't... And, and again, we want to go down the road of it being a very different game depending on which role you choose. So if you are an engineer, then you don't need to worry about captaining the ship or flying the ship. You just focus on your engineering tasks and then the NPCs will do the rest for you. So the NPC captain will decide where to go, decide what to explore. And you're just busily working away in engineering. Right. <laughs> um, so you've, you've mentioned engineering. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody who, again, anybody who might not be familiar with this, whilst this is a lovely bridge, this isn't the only part of the ship, is it? There are plenty of, um, I'm going to say plenty, there are, there are, there are other space um, starship simulations in inverted commas that, that have a very nice uh, bridge simulation going on, but there is a lot more to this ship than just this bridge, isn't there? Oh, yeah, so one of the things that really frustrates me in gaming in general is locked doors and things that don't do anything mm. and you know i i love ship interiors yeah again you know for me the whole starship experience is the whole starship mm. and i want a whole starship so every, every single square inch of this ship is reachable and explorable every room on every deck and that will all be fleshed out as much as possible you know within the limits of the game engine so we should have a complete starship, seven decks, well over 200 rooms, and they should all serve some kind of purpose in one way or another. In a one-to-one -one scale recreation of the galaxy that's procedurally Absolutely. generated. You're not doing yep. this by halves, are you, Dan? <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, shoot for the stars. <laughs> should we have a little look around then? So we'll, we'll come back to yeah, the bridge, let's... but um, if we take a trip down the corridor... Sure, sure. Well, the first room here is the captain's office. Um, it's still not quite finished. Um, we're going to get some sort of tea and coffee machines and things in here. Maybe a sofa and a bit of a rug, just to flesh it out a little bit. And actually, while we're in here, it's probably worth uh, talking about interactivity. Um, so over here on the window, <clears throat> you've got the ability to turn on scene projections. <laughs> so if you get sick of... I don't know why you would, but if you got sick of staring out at the stars, um, then you can just have a little bit of home, just that to keep yourself brilliant. grounded. That is brilliant. And um, we, we've been discussing, rather than just using a, a cube map, which is all this is, um, actually using a proper 3D scene. So right. we'll actually have proper moving 3D scenes out there, oh, wow. rather than the, rather than the static image, which would be even cooler. Brilliant. Oh, that's very and, cool. You can't see it very clearly right now, but we've also got polarization. So if you're parked in front of a star, uh, and we've made the stars purposefully insanely bright, yeah. so that the polarization actually serves a purpose. You do actually need to turn it on. Um, stars are big, scary things, and we want them to, re to remain big, scary things that you Excellent. shouldn't go near. Excellent. Um, and but yeah, but you know, in terms of interaction. We want something to fiddle with, no matter where you are. So I can sort of pick up a cup and like litter with my cup, um, and we can play with the lights. So we can turn the lights on and off. Um, we can play with a dimmer switch. We can play with the. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can play with the uh, the Kelvin temperature of the lighting. So er everything everything can be fiddled with. And um, yeah, and you can have cup fights. So you can throw cups at people. That's brilliant. Most people don't realise this, but when you're holding something, if you press F, you can actually chuck it. So oh, okay. Can... Oh, okay. Cup fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, well, that's the philosophy. So it's probably a good opportunity to demonstrate the chairs as well. So <laughs> yes, chairs yes, are fully mobile. 
Rini and I discovered this quite early on and spent several hours. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have debated having a, a chair race set up that you can kind of trigger, like a chair racing event. Um, it's com- completely silly but i think people will love it so we'll probably do absolutely, that absolutely that will happen yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> that will happen okay um over this side there's nothing here yet um, that was going to be an armory but we're going to turn that into the sort of a deck bathroom okay so the bridge crew can use that to relieve themselves this is the conference room um so this will be used during gameplay um most likely just for mission briefings so this screen here will have uh, an overview of any current mission that you're on and generally speaking that's going to be given to you by people you encounter so you could rock up to an alien world contact the people that live there and in order to sort of gain their favor there might be things they ask you to do so those sorts of missions will be available on the screen here okay. along with other information you discover on your journey so things like uh, the crew roster could go on this screen so this is like the main way of accessing all the ship's database okay okay and um, so we're moving around the ship on, on foot here at the moment are you planning on having because uh, i know we haven't got to it yet but this is a damn big ship so are, there, are, are you sort of talking about um having elevators and things as well like yeah so there's one here um it's, it's not finished yet it just goes up and down um it will have proper controls so it works properly um, but right now as a test it just hopped up and down cool. um i won't hop in it yet let's so have a quick look around here a um, couple of seating areas um you can't sit on the sofas yet but that will be coming um these don't really serve any any real gameplay purpose other than just role play and relaxing yeah they don't need to though do they it would all be a bit sterile otherwise and that's it yeah so we just run down the stairs uh, this is the VIP lounge, um, which isn't finished yet. It's still sort of a work in progress, um, hence the hovering tables. <laughs> um, but the idea is this is where the, the bridge crew and the VIPs on the ship, this is where they'll hang out of an evening or between shifts. Okay. We'll flesh out the bar and we have a, a working piano. Very oh, nice. It does work. It works in multiplayer. Oh, brilliant. And um, we're going to have a MIDI component plugged into it as well. So if you've got a real MIDI keyboard, you can actually play the piano oh using a MIDI word. keyboard. Oh my word. So you're, yeah, you're so going to have people giving concerts and stuff. That'll be amazing. It will. It will. Absolutely. So yeah, we really want to, to get people just you know, playing music on the ship. Which oh, that's cool. fantastic. Uh, so moving on through here, we have what will be the galley kitchen and storage room. <laughs> This is why it's littered with produce. Donuts, that was day one, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sorry what I've just done to your storage there, Dan, I'm sorry. That, that's fine, that's fine. There's actually um, a ship impact simulation, which I can't remember whether I turned it off. If you press F, do things fly everywhere? Uh, no. No, I, I did turn that off. <laughs> um, one of the things we're going to have is if the ship takes an impact, yeah. anything that it's not is going to get knocked off shelves and wobble around so they all kind of react to the ship taking damage the whole damage, environment will fun. actually shake around you kind of thing yeah yeah bottles will fall over things will fall off tables oh, um and everything will have physicalized damage as well so carpets will be ripped ball panels will be broken okay are you sort of are you thinking kind of a vr support for for this as well or is that kind of a bit a bit in the future or um it's not hugely in the future um i have tested it in the vr and it does work okay um i haven't implemented um any locomotion methods or, or interaction methods yet okay. um but um like if we look at this panel here for example this is one of the, the many electrical distribution boxes around the ship um which is worth pointing out is actually live and simulating real electric it uses um ohm's law and power law it uses all the actual um, electrical engineering math My word. but um yeah, everything you press um is just pressable so in vr um it's it's really not as not a big step to have vr able to press that as well okay, okay. So ev every everything in the game is sort of being designed with vr in mind okay so tr transitioning to vr shouldn't be a huge uh, difficulty at all Okay, so over this side we have a storeroom 
Um, yes, there's a Christmas tree. <laughs> and again, with the whole realism thing, um, there will be seasonal decorations aboard the ship, which you can turn on and off. So if you turn on the, the Christmas decorations, the tree will no longer be in the storeroom. It will but be out in the lounge. But it's got to live somewhere. That's brilliant. And that's that's it. That's the whole point. So building it for real, I'm thinking about if it was real, what storage space would we need? Where would we put the Christmas tree yeah. when we're not using it? Yeah, so, absolutely. It, it, you know, I'm constantly ask, asking myself these questions. You know, when you're not using it, where does it go? And I love there. the I love the work in progress post-it notes that are everywhere. By the way, it's <laughs> yeah. glorious. That was one of those three AM ideas. It just works. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So sanitizer and toilet roll. <laughs> Suggestive that this is going to be the bathroom. Yep. Um, yeah, all the bathrooms on the ship are going to be unisex, so it's just going to be sink, mirror, toilet cubicles. Okay. Um. And, and the NPC crew will just you know, take themselves off and, and use the bathrooms. Um, we want it to be somewhat like Sims in space in that regard. Right. So, okay. so the NPC crew are all going to have various stats, you know, like ladder, happiness, health, right, all those right. things. Bladder. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they will have their own... They're not routines as such. They are event-driven um, priorities right so they'll have their role tasks but if if their ladder becomes more of a priority than their job role then yeah. they'll go and do that instead right. um, okay. and you'll be able to because they're they're completely always there on the ship completely physicalized the npcs don't spawn in and out as you're wandering around they're always right. there does that um, so, so, you, so sorry does that does that mean they've they've got quarters assigned to them and things like that Absolutely, and they will go to their quarters. So, so you'll be able to follow an NPC for their entire day and, and just watch them whilst they go about their job <laughs> and visiting the bathroom and going to sleep. So it, it's like a stalking simulator. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's all about keeping it real. Uh, absolutely, no, I can get that. That's really awesome. Uh, so this will be the main crew lift, um, which just goes up and down between... Uh, five decks okay so the the only deck that doesn't have direct lift access will be the lower engineering deck and that's just mostly our equipment rooms okay. so it's not really somewhere the crew goes okay um i'll show you one of the vip quarters um they're all the same but this is the only one that has lighting right now um so this is one of six vip suites so this is essentially the captain's quarters um, where we are now, this will be a small lounge area, uh, sort of wrap wrap around sofa, coffee table in the middle, nice views out the window. Very nice. Very uh, nice. A little office area here. Obviously a bedroom. Yeah. It'll have Very a cute. double bed, wardrobes, that sort of thing, and then a sort of a, a shower and bathroom. It's, it's sort of like a self-contained um, apartment, really. Nice. Okay. Okay. A little ki kitchen area over here. And again, it'll be packed with interactivity, so lots of things you can pick up and fiddle with and make drinks for yourself and that sort of thing. And eating and drinking will be a thing in the game. Um, we don't want to make it sort of a hardcore survival game, but... It could be a difficult be one to balance that, can't it? Yeah. It can, yeah. So it, it will be sort of survival light. Okay. So you know, as long as you eat and drink once per day, that's sufficient. Okay. It just it gives people a reason to go to the mess hall and to actually sure. use that that stuff. Sure. Okay. Um, so the science labs uh, or C deck rather is is all science labs. This is where all the science takes place. Uh, none of them are built out yet, as you can see from all the empty bare framework. They they are perhaps a little on the large side, um, but we also do need a fair bit of storage for all the things you bring up from planetary services. Right. Okay. Um, this is probably a good time to talk about what the point of that is. So when you're out exploring, um, doing science is one of the main ways you'll, you'll drive the upgrade path for the ship. So every component is going to be upgradable in some way. So even the wires, you'll be able to upgrade to sort of lower resistance, higher quality. Wow. Um, there's better wiring that doesn't damage as easily. and 
obviously you need new and better materials in order to 3D print these new wires. So the science teams will be involved in researching those new materials. So if you arrive at a planet, you find an unknown mineral, you can then bring that aboard the ship initially via a probe until we do planetary landings, which are of the future. Oh but for the initially, it's going to be via probes as you were down. Even, it will come back. Hmm? Even just even just sending a pro, like even sending a probe down. So you're talking about a probe return mission, right? So it'll go down, presumably in real time. Yes. Um, yes. Grab a sample of something for you and then come back. That's even that's kind of. I, I love that kind of like. God, that's really. <laughs> I find that sort of thing really interesting, though. That's re that's really fascinating. I mean, obviously, you know, you want to get you want to get in a, a shuttle, and we'll we'll talk about that later. But you want to get in a shuttle and fly down to a planet yourself. But even just sending a probe down and then waiting for that probe to come back and then kind of interacting with it when it when it comes back in and getting yourself that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, I'll um, I'll walk you through how that works. Okay. So. If we um if we take a jog over to the probe facility, so again this is all work in progress. Oh look, there's one of your donuts. It fell through the floor. <laughs> it's a phased donut, that one. Yeah. Quite rare. <laughs> so this is at the the back of the ship. We're well, not all the way at the back, um, okay. but towards the rear. And um, this is going to be the drone handling facility. So. This is where drones can be 3D printed. So you'll have some storage racks for drones, uh, or probes rather, um, 3D print beds for printing out new ones. And you'll have a sort of a landing pad and launch facility at the back here with its own little airlock. So the idea is on the bridge, the bridge will target the location on the planetary surface right. where the probe's going to go. Mm. That gets sent through to this facility here, mm. and whoe whoever's manning this facility will then load the drone or probe into the launching mechanism, which will then launch it out. Um, everyone then waits patiently for it to come back. We won't make that too long, a couple of minutes. Um, and when it arrives, it arrives back here uh, in the airlock, and then it'll spray it with some decontaminant or other. Um, and then that will contain the sample. So you'll open the, the probe up and there will be a physicalized sample inside that you can then pick up and handle. Wow. So then we so we have our probe uh, sample in hand, which could be anything from a plant, a rock, a small alien creature, uh, a bit of pottery, a bit of tech, you know, anything we can think of really. Right. Something that, that's been retrieved from the surface. And, and the surface targets will be things like like a mineral outcropping, an archaeological site, um, an interesting like cops of trees or whatever. So those will come up on the bridge as target locations. We send down the probe, we retrieve our sample relevant to that location, and then we take our probe, our uh, sample rather, and we go to the science lab that will be handling that particular sample. So if we have a look at the, the wall over here, these are just some temporary labels. This will be replaced by a proper wall screen. Um, you can see that one of the ones listed is oceanography. So, so that, that probe, when it comes back, could have a canister of water right. with some sea life in it or, or just bacterial life. Um, so if this here, for example, was the oceanography lab, yeah. um, then we would put it on some kind of machinery and then the science could take place on that sample. Oh, and wow. that sample is, is physicalized and it now exists on the ship. So when you're done doing science on it, it either goes on a shelf or you can take it to your crew quarters or put it in the lounge. You can just do whatever you want with it. Right. So the <laughs> so the, the, the physicalized objects, whatever they happen to be that you bring up from the surface, those are cre those, that because it's a big old galaxy, those, that, that's created procedurally, presumably? It is, yes. Okay. So um, so there's, there's various um, procedural asset tools. Unreal Engine 5 actually has released, recently really improved theirs. So the, the, the meshes, the physical objects, will be procedurally generated and hopefully seeded so they're all completely unique. Um, and, and part of the thing with actually expanding the team is, you know, we want artists that are doing nothing else 
but just coming up with new and interesting coming up with um, bits yeah bits. yeah so so we can procedurally you know lego like attach yeah. them together to make new objects wow, okay. um a, a bit like a bit like no man's sky i guess yeah um yeah. sort of like a a hyper realistic version of no man's sky so hopefully we won't have any weird multicolored wonderful things not all the time anyway there'll be some yeah yeah it's extraordinary actually isn't it that we that the sort of the 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 technology environment that you and i live in these days that uh, tools like unreal engine are now available to people who aren't ea you know or um or absolutely Ubisoft or whatever you know that you, you can put you can put them in the hands of um of, of prosumers um and then games like games like this that would never get never get green lit in a boardroom ever ever yeah it's far too and, niche <laughs> yeah exactly well you know but that you say like then they're, they're niche but they're but they're not they you know i'm sure there's there's a million and one people on the planet if you pitch this game to them they'd say i'd absolutely love to play that i would adore playing that all day long um yeah but a boardroom is never going to take a risk on on something like that they you know they wouldn't see the value in it um but it's just it's just amazing that these kind of things can now be put in the hands of people like you and also like not not being a big um a big corporation being a you know an, an independent um house essentially you've got that kind of agility um in your in your in your design and development where you can you can identify um a hole in your game or a, or a need in the community of people that are playing it and immediately pivot towards it and take care of it I'm yes assuming, absolutely do you know what i mean it doesn't require like you know 15 design documents and kind of financial um uh, agreement from the boardroom and nobody's got to do projections on where it's going to go or anything like you know you can just go yeah that's a good idea let's do that absolutely yeah i mean operational agility is is one of the things we really want to maintain mm. i mean it can it can be a, a blessing and a curse because absolutely yeah feature creep you're all, exists, yeah yeah, yeah you know, flights of fancy are very mm. much something i'm prone to so yeah you know, I'll, I'll think of a cool idea and go oh i must implement that yeah and yeah. my part my partner claire who is kind of i call her the um the gatekeeper of feature creep because <laughs> she goes no you have a to-do list you will stick to your to-do list <laughs> we don't need three-headed dogs by tuesday exactly exactly so she kind of keeps me on the straight and narrow um but yeah absolutely and we've actually turned down quite a few publisher offers already oh, okay. um for that very reason yeah because yeah. you know we want to retain creative control and creative freedom and you know we don't need external parties dictating time scales or feature lists yeah yeah so yeah, we're keen to retain that that um, indep independence. The um, sorry, just back to the drone the drone handling role, mm. by the way, that you mentioned down the hall. Are you are you um, are you pitching that as a potentially a player could do that as well? They could be the guy in the drone room. Yeah, absolutely. So that'll be part of the science role. Um, so all all these rooms will be part of the science department. And if if you choose to play as a player in the science department, then there will be a a jobs board with jobs that come up for you to do. And so both you and the NPCs work from the same task sheets. Um, so as the jobs come up on the job board, mm. they just get assigned to whoever's in that team. And there there will be two, two separate roles in each department. So you'll have either just the scientists or, or the head of the science team. And same with engineering, an engineer or head of engineering. If, if you choose to be the head of engineering, then you get the additional ability to just assign tasks as as you see fit. Right. Whereas if you choose to be just an engineer, then you do what you're told. Right. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so each department will have the you know the, the, the command role and just the worker role. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. So so you know, continuing along with the the surface samples. So if you're going to stand out in the light. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so, so any of these labs, um, each one will have a, a specific purpose, and you take your sample to the relevant lab, whatever that lab may be. Um, we haven't yet defined exactly what the list of labs will be. Sure. But, um, you know, we'll go through all the different science disciplines. We'll come up with a list of, of different things that are relevant to those disciplines. Right. And then that will, will form the, the, 
the list of sorts of things you can pull up from planetary surfaces. So it'll, it'll all make sense and it will all be science-based. Um, as with everything else in the game, we want it based on real-world science as okay. much as possible. Is there is there a risk that you could bring you could potentially bring something up from the surface that you'd rather you hadn't brought up from the surface accidentally or is that a yep, feature absolutely. creepy okay no 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 that's that's very much on the to-do list and that's going to be part of the tactical role so okay. one of the biggest challenges is having always had something to do on the ship hmm. for some roles like in engineering it's easy or you know if you're a medical officer it's easy you just can you just keep feeding sick bay with sick people yeah um, but for things like the pilot or the tactical role, when you're not actually in combat, what's the tactical officer actually doing mm. other than mm. just sitting there twiddling his thumbs? Mm. So, you know, we need other things happening aboard ship. Like a couple of NPCs could get into a fight and you have to go and sort, of sort them out, <laughs> maybe take take one to the brig. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, pulling up an unexpected insect, for example, on a plant, which might seem innocuous, but then breeds exponentially you could have nice. suddenly your ship is is full of unwanted creepy crawlies that the tactical officer then needs to go and deal with nice okay i've seen so, movies yeah. about that dan it didn't end well <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah I'm, I'm a i'm a big fan of the alien series so some yeah. of that might might creep into it somewhere i'm off that day <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm, ba- um, I'm, uh, I'm on a bound to ask, by the way, because the because the wife asked me. She wanted to know if there was going to be a camera suite in the game of any description. Or, um, I know you. I know you've got drones that you can sort of you can steer around and. Um, at the yes. Moment. So, if you mean in terms of machinima and making movies, yeah. Um, yes. So those little camera drones are, are just a test of the concept. Okay. Um, but they will be extended to to have a lot of different um, functionality. So right now you can you can zoom, you can um, do like depth of field and things with them, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's decent enough for now. Um, but we want to really expand the feature set of those sure. and give players the ability to, I guess, turn the game into a recording studio. So okay. I know that you know fan movies and things are a huge deal, and people really want the the playground in order to be able to do that so yeah yeah, yeah we're, we're we're fully supportive of that and we'll we will add whatever it is people need so excellent people tell us what they need and we will add it excellent excellent she will be very happy good good uh, um i was talking about upgrade path wasn't i so yes sorry i sounded like you yeah go on yeah that's all right so, so yeah so the whole point we went and got something from the drone handling facility is because we wanted to upgrade the ship in some way so so let's say that we got a rock let's say this is the geology lab Mm. we take the rock to the geology lab and the science team unlock the mysteries of that rock so in doing so they have themselves gained some skill and they will have unlocked um, a technology level in terms of that rock so now you have access to a new mineral that will unlock certain upgrades for certain things aboard the ship. So that particular mineral might be like a really good insulator, or it might be really highly superconductive. So anything that uses that sort of thing yeah. can benefit from being 3D printed using that material. Oh, my and, okay. and and that's how that's how things will be upgraded. So, so you the- will. Your 3D say, print. The, the ship you start with is not the ship you'll you'll kind of end with, if you see what I mean. No, no. So so you 3D print a new part, remove the old one, and replace it with a newly 3D printed one, and you know that is essentially how the ship's being upgraded. So again, it, it's one to one. You're physically creating the piece and then putting the piece in place. Wow. Okay. And then just recycling the old piece. Okay. So given that this is sort of Earth's kind of first deep space um, exploration mission I am right in that on either they you yes. sort of looking at a, a fleet of, of, of ships out in the galaxy or anything will there be oh, yeah. a, a, okay oh okay um, <laughs> I can hear Claire getting twitchy um, yeah. <laughs> uh, will there be any other infrastructure anywhere else in the galaxy at all like um, I'm thinking sort of dry docks or space stations or anything albeit closer to Earth so for humanity predominantly Earth 
Yeah. Um, I, I think we'll, we'll probably do some something around Alpha Centauri just because it's right there. Sure. Um, you know, law wise, you know, the FT the FTL wasn't like one day we had it, the next day, you know, before we didn't. Yeah. It's going to be the case that it's it's always been working sort of sub light so we can get to places like Alpha Centauri in a reasonable time frame mm. but not fast enough that you can explore the galaxy mm -hmm. so the idea okay. of the engine in this ship this is the first ship we've been able to build which is truly capable of exploring the galaxy okay. so you know beyond the immediate neighborhood there's no humanity no human presence at all in the galaxy okay but that doesn't mean there aren't other presences in the galaxy no so the the aside from the ones we create manually um and, and there will be some you know some, some key races we manually create with you know big empires and things the uh, rest of the whole galaxy will be procedurally filled out and you know I, i've got lots of different ways i'm going to handle that um in a nutshell without going into the complexities of it too much the, the galaxy is split into a hundred light year cubes mm. and each one of those cubes is generated in isolation with its own seed mm. so there's yeah, a, a couple of billion uh, seeds which are completely isolated sections of the galaxy so so within that hundred light year cube it will decide whether or not there's one civilization controlling that entire region or whether there's multiple at war or whether or not it's all independent civilizations so able to decide on a, on a sector by sector basis and we're, we're calling these hundred light year cube sectors right. so each sector will decide what sort of thing is going on there within that region and then when any planet within that sector generates life it will reference the, that sector's plan for that region and generate that life accordingly so so when you enter a new sector you're not going to know really who's there whether it's one entire e empire or whether or not it's just lots of little independent worlds and again that's the joy of the discovery side of it so at all times we're trying to leverage that joy of discovery and, and yeah. not knowing what you're going to find and is it going to be good is it going to be bad you don't know until you get there right okay so like so a multiplayer game um when you when you fire up a multiplayer game that will be your starship and there won't be any other starships you know i won't my wife's starship for example won't be sitting next to me or whatever that's right um, yeah so uh, it, it's 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 a co-op game sure so you're all on the same ship okay um, however and there is a however okay um it, there isn't any reason why we can't have multiple smaller starships okay so something that we're going to do at a later point is allow players to have a small fleet of small ships not something huge like this because oh. we're getting to sort of engine limitation you know, problems yeah, yeah. there yeah. so maybe two three smaller ships and then you could have two or three separate crews all flying off together as as a as a like an armada wow, okay. um, but not yet for now it's just one ship so if I if I go to a, a, a particular star system uh, and a particular planet and there's a civilization there, if my friend was to go to that star system in their on their ship, will they see a different civilization, or is there a chance that they won't see a civilization? Is everybody's galaxy the same basically, or is or is everybody's galaxy going to be different? Yes, it's the same for everybody. Okay. Um, on purpose because. We're, we're really keen for the community to to, to really explore as a community okay. so if if one person finds something really cool we want for them to be able to share that with their friends and the community at large and just say you need to go here it's amazing and you know there could be some you know spectacular planet escapes or there could be a really interesting alien race that's been generated from the mad algorithms or the borg or the borg <laughs> yeah <laughs> and again so on that note, um, I'm I'm a huge fan of Babylon Five. And Me too, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I would say of all of the various sci-fi series there are, Babylon Five is probably my favourite. Yeah, me too, um, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Love yeah. it. And you know, one of the things I love about it is 
I, don't, I guess it, it's got that mystery to mm. it. it mm. It's it's a lot more mysterious and um, ethereal in some way than, than other sci-fi's. It's yeah. it's got that unknown, and you know that's the kind of of energy I want from this game. I want there to be mysteries in the galaxy. I want you to come across an alien race that's so far beyond you that you have no hope of understanding who they are, you know, what their motives are, what are they doing? You just don't know because they're yeah. so far beyond you. And because of the procedural generation, those races are going to have you know, a wide spectrum of personalities of you know how xenophobic are they you know sort of thing how aggressive mm -hmm. are they and that means that you're going to get a perfect storm of a highly aggressive highly xenophobic highly technologically advanced race that is out there somewhere lurking in the dark and some poor player is going to come across them oh, and not not live to tell the tale but then they'll tell their friends about that place yeah you know, if you go to Zahadum, you will die. You will die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how do you? How do you sort of? I mean, how do you intending to sort of to? Will you need to have like a central database that everybody's game reports back to, or will will an, an in, will individual is the the way the galaxy is created? Will it just naturally be the same wherever anybody goes? If you see what yes. I mean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The latter. It, it'll it'll naturally generate the same thing okay. for everyone. Because wow, okay. everyone is the the seed for the sector is based entirely on its X, Y, Z coordinates. Right, so it's right. the coordinates of the area drives the seed. Um, so as long as nothing moves, then everyone will get the same seed for that planet or star system. Right, okay, okay. That's very cool. Okay, should we head down to engineering then? Yes, let's. And you sort of, are you? I, I guess um, if you want the community exploring the galaxy, are you kind of, are you keen for um, the community. Well, I guess this will happen whether you're keen or not. But the, sort of for the community to create their own tools and um, their yeah. own um, databases, essentially. Hello, Eleanor Bennett. <laughs> Just busily going about her job. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, th there's there's definitely a balance between creating tools within the game and then allowing players to have the, you know, the creative freedom to make their own tools. Yeah. So the way we're going to approach this is that we will support players in the creation of their own tools where, where we can. Cool. Um, so if there's a, a certain amount of data that they need from the game, we'll work on making it available for them so that they can use that in their tools. Nice. Okay. Um, because, yeah, I, I would love to see a community mapping project. In fact, to be honest, we've already got some. Yeah. Um, we've got a, a guy on our Discord who's started mapping black holes and another rare phenomena in the galaxy. Wow. Um, it's just a spreadsheet for now. But, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the snowball has started. Yeah, absolutely. That stuff's really cool. Yeah, I, I, I really like that kind of out of game stuff um, in other yeah. games that I've played as well. I really enjoy that aspect of it. It's very cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. so engineering. Wow. Um, where to start? So let's start at the reactor. I'm so this tired is. Of seeing that. Yeah. It is pretty. Yeah. It it's going to have a, a bit of an upgrade at some point because those uh, those little yellow bits sticking out, um, they're they're neutral beam injectors, okay. and they are going to be a consumable, so they will break, okay, and, and wear out. So the little um, the little balconies that are sticking out here, this allows you access to that. Um, but I built the reactor before I built anything else, um, so that it just needs just a, a graphical overhaul it needs remodeling it needs to be easier to get to the component tree to you know, replace the broken parts and the reactor is going to be made of of numerous pieces um which all work together to form the full the full reactor hardware okay okay so pieces of the reactor will break and will need to be replaced okay very cool uh, if we go downstairs and have a look so Ignore the um, the not fitting UI. That's um, this is actually an older version of it. It's it's also on the on the, the latest development build. It's an awful lot bigger and fits even worse. So I'm still working <laughs> on that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been working on a fluid system for the reactor lately, and that's pretty much done now. So that should be coming to a demo build near you soon. A fluid so, system. 
Yeah, so these pipes here, um, yeah. they aren't just there to look pretty. They actually do serve a purpose. So in this instance, this is the uh, the coolant pipes which flow coolant through the magnetic coils on the reactor. Okay. Um, and they will actually be flowing fluid through them to cool the coils. Um, <laughs> and that's that's part of, I guess, the reactor gameplay about keeping it cool. And what I was working on last night, actually, on, on my live stream, um, I was working on managing the, the heating and the cooling as you turn the reactor above 100 percent right um, wow okay and it was quite funny actually because because it's so organic i found that it was also it was kind of self-regulating because as the temperature was going up the reaction efficiency was going down so the output was going down which was bringing the temperature back down so it didn't matter how high i turned up the reactor it kept self-regulating. Oh, it's okay. kind of it's got it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> so, that is very cool. Yeah. So um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm having to um, yeah, fix that so that it it doesn't self-regulate quite so, so that much. So it's problematic. Yeah, you need it to be a yeah. problem. So this is uh, when you when you when you sort of end up in engineering. This is where it, you. I, for me, anyway, you really start to get that. This is where the simulation really comes into it because the, when you're sitting on a on the bridge and you're steering a starship around, you can do that in pretty much you know a, um, a whole bunch of games. But yeah, you're, you're mentioning you know the, the fluid cooling system. I've also on your um, on your live stream last night you were talking about um, the I'm going to get the chemicals wrong deuterium and HE3 was it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that those are the two sort of fuel components that that drive the the reaction that that generates the electricity, all of which is simulated. Um, Absolutely. To yeah. power the the faster than light drive, and that's all these. Um, one of the things I suppose that's real hard to get across to, um, to people who might just casually look at this is that the the ship is absolutely full of cables and wires, and all of which, um, I guess, in the right scenario, could take damage or fail or. Um, and it all has to be managed and maintained, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at the last measurement, it was something around about five kilometers of cabling, My word. Um, end to end, which is madness. But um, if you look at the cables here, you can see that they've all got names on them. And you know, those, those are real cable names. They're, they're named for a reason, because they need wow. to be. Because they go um, somewhere and do something. Because yeah, exactly. Um, you know, right now they're just sticking out the side because they're not modelled. Mm -hmm. um, but all of these cables, when I've actually got around to modelling them properly, you will be able to follow them from their source to their destination. Every single one of them. And when you know when a cable fails, you, know, you will remove that cable and replace it with a new one. Um, everything you know, it's, it's one to one. That's bonkers. That's um, really bonkers. And yeah, you know, we've got a full a full electrical distribution system which is running in real time and is fully simulated so for example if you if you press the start capacitor button there uh, so bottom the, the bottom three oh yeah on the right hand side if okay. so you just press that so what that does you notice everything's turned turned red sorry Dan <laughs> <laughs> so so what you've done you've just shut off the main reactor feed so the ship is now running on the start capacitors okay so it's that's yeah you know, that that's what will be part of the startup sequence so when you walk into the ship completely cold and dark it'll be black until you press that button oh my word right now and this confuses people yeah but you've just turned off all feeds and it's still working and the reason for that is because the ship's powered by batteries so right now you've turned off all power from the reactor but the ship will keep ticking because of the batteries but if the batteries now drain dry the ship will go dark oh my word I'm gonna start and... watching things. <laughs> So the, um, the 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 reactor generates generates power. The power is pushed out to capacitors and and then to batteries for storage. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So it goes from the reactor 
through various distribution buses into the batteries and then from the batteries um, out to each deck and you've got like these here so like this one here for example you can see you've got two battery aggregators so that's two sets of battery rooms okay. and that powers this quadrant of the ship okay. so if you imagine that the ship is a pizza that's cut into four slices <laughs> yep <laughs> then each of those pizza slices is one quadrant of power so so that the front quadrant for example could be completely destroyed and damaged but the other three would still work because right. it's all isolated it's all um, built for redundancy I was a, a network engineer in a previous life so I, I immediately think about redundancy and then it's now bleeding things. through yeah it's bleeding it is through. it is <laughs> so um, as far as multiplayer is concerned are you sort of are you looking at a, a client server model or um, peer to peer or a mix of both yeah it's um it's a session based sort of just hop in so one player hosts like minecraft one player hosts a game and then friends can just hop in to that game um, okay and dedicated and servers yes we, we will be looking at dedicated servers and um, we've got pretty much all the components we need to make them work okay. um we just need to go through the process of you know setting it all up um but yeah we'll have a separate executable for running a headless client um and then people can have maybe there's a, a group of players that are on a particular mission they can have their server running and then they can just hop in and out of that server you know as they want to God, that's a rabbit hole in it that's just oh my word yeah that's amazing okay um and you you talked um you touched briefly on sort of going down to um planet surfaces um away team stuff essentially um that's further down the line but you've you're um my understanding is you've got sort of um shuttles and things like that are, are kind of on the on the cards yeah so we've done a few tests on that so you know we've got some terrain being generated mm. which you can run around and I spawned loads of chairs all over it because that's the kind of person I am. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling around on the surface on chairs. Nice. Yeah, that's important work. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so the idea is you'll take a shuttle out of the shuttle bay and you'll have full control over it. So you'll, mm. you'll be able to fly the shuttle no differently than the main ship. Um, and you'll use that for a number of different purposes. Um, we want to have like derelict alien stations you can explore and de derelict alien ships. And your way of getting to them will be to take a shuttle across right. to whatever that object is, and then you can explore on foot from there. Wow. Um, and we'll have the same process for, for planets as well. So right now, the way I want it to work, because I think it's important to state that it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to have real-time planetary landings using the ship or the main ship or the shuttles mm. because of the way we handle movement within the galaxy so obviously we're on a massive ship it's it's made of many thousands of pieces most of which are running code yeah. full physics 200 crew members wandering around yeah if you try and move that then the game would crash yeah. you, you can't move that much stuff so we're moving the galaxy around the ship instead Okay, space, okay. space is the thing that is moving. Okay. Um, but that also means that we're chucking planets around. When you roll the ship, we're moving the planet. And if you imagine now that that planet is covered in trees and rocks and grass and everything else, you can't move all that at once. Mm. So it, it's it's very computationally difficult in order to, you know, to move two things at the same time. Right. So there has to be some form of transition. And I want to keep planetary exploration as as one to one in real time as possible. So my plan is to have the, the the area in which you fly down through the atmosphere. It will know where that is, mm. corresponding to the surface location. Right. Or have a a brief transition as you pass into the upper atmosphere of the planet, and then you can freely fly around the planet's surface. If you then fly up again above a certain altitude, you will be then put back into space. Right. Okay, so, okay. so we need to teleport the player's shuttle to the surface environment, depending on where their relative surface coordinates are. But I don't want it to be a 
a locked transition so it physically lands you and, and then you can't fly around yeah um i do i do want the freedom of being able to explore in a shuttle around the surface we just need to work on making that happen sure space so, so, first though yeah yeah, yeah, ship first, uh, and then we'll work on, on the surface yeah, transitions, yeah. but okay. um, but that, that's that's the grand plan. Okay, can you talk a little, just to, just to explain to the folks, because it's slightly unusual, isn't it, what your um, what your business model is, for because people can actually get hold of this now, can't they, in, uh, from Steam? Yes, so so right now there's a demo available. Um, the rest is just a tech demo, so you know, a lot of... The, the gameplay of like surface retrieval and things is coming but right now sort of what what you see here is what's in the demo so you you can explore the whole galaxy the whole galaxy is implemented um it's missing a lot so we don't have moons yet so we don't have um like multi-star systems mm. um but you can just fly around and explore what's there the whole ship is here a lot of it's unfinished but you do have full access to it and the, the electrical system is practically done so you can fiddle with that so you know there's a lot to see there's a lot to fiddle with and hopefully that gives players an idea of of the scope and the potential for this game um but yes it's still very much work in progress that's brilliant okay but um, yes so sorry, in, in, sorry, in, just to answer the question because mm. i went i went off on a tangent there um yes so we're, we're we're giving the game away for free that is very much the plan and we're, you know, the reason for this is, you know, this is just me on my own. I, I'm building up a brand new studio from scratch. We don't have any funding. It's literally just me, um, with my my very good wife Claire helping out. And you know, in order to to build up the studio and to build up the community, the best way to do that is just to remove all barriers to entry and say, right, here's the game, play it. Let us know what you think. If you love it, back it. Yeah. And you know, we're going to Kickstarter hopefully very soon. Again, you know, Dan time thing the time scales are stretching out. <laughs> um, but yeah, at some point over the next few weeks, you know, Kickstarter will go live. And you know, if if we hit all our targets and if we get a lot of funding on Kickstarter, then you know that's that's just immediately me going out and buying developers and saying, right, you, you, you come work on the game start building cool stuff um you know, if we don't get the funding it's going to take longer sure. but uh, yes we you know we very much want to just remove all barriers to entry and just let people play the game i've got a, i've got a gut feeling that you're probably going to do okay dan i think you're probably fingers like crossed fingers crossed there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm for this so yeah i mean if you know if kickstarter doesn't make enough in order to be able to expand the team um sort of plan b is to start um selling some ships so okay. i'll build some, you know, a variety of different ships and they'll go on steam as dlcs and hopefully we can generate the money we need to buy team members that way brilliant okay all right because uh, yeah game game dev costs money and people cost money if they do and indeed they do indeed good people cost even more money yeah absolutely it's great it's i mean it's great again coming back to the sort of uh, the, the the environment that we live in these days though it's great that you can you can explore these different things and you can have a plan b and um it's not kind of a an all or nothing deal but yeah yeah absolutely be very interested to see where Kickstarter goes. Dan, I'm not going to keep you any more. We've already taken you away from your development time for long enough. So um, no thank, problem. You, thank you very much for the tour. Um, I'll put links in the uh, description to this video below if you want to take a look at Starship yourself. Um, Dan, thank you so much. Really appreciate the tour, mate. That's fantastic. It has been a pleasure. Thank you, mate. So there you have it. You'll find links below to grab the technology demo of Starship Simulator for yourself if you want to give it a try. And there's also links there to everything else Starship Simulator, including the game's official Discord server. As Dan mentioned, they're looking to take the project to Kickstarter in the near future, so watch out for that if you'd like to become a backer and help bring the project into full production. My sincere thanks to Dan for the chat and the tour of the ship. You can bet when there's more news about Starship Simulator we'll bring it to you right here.